Okay, so in part two, I want to talk a little bit about the best practices for reading academic papers. Now, I, I do not consider myself to be an expert at this. However, um, I do think that there are some some general patterns that we want to look for, and there there are some, certainly some things that, that I've I've figured out for myself that help make it easier uh, when I'm reading a paper. So let's let's just kind of take a look here. Um, so. Academic papers, you know, if, if you're already very familiar with them, you can skip this part totally fine and go ahead and on to, 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 to part three. But if this is something that's new for you, then um, let's talk about it. So the abstract is kind of the, in a nutshell, what is this paper doing, right? So it generally has the, the a statement about, you know, what people have been recently trying to do, um, some justification for what they're doing, and then how well they did it. It's kind of like how the abstract is typically laid out. And then the paper is laid out in similar fashion, where first it introduces the subject matter, talks about people who have done things that are similar, lays out the architecture that they are introducing, which is what we're going to focus on a ton, um, and then evaluates it with the experiments um, and uh, kind of concludes. And this one actually has an appendix that, that has uh, lots of other interesting interesting things going on. So um, in this paper, as like sort of a first pass, I, I, most people I know just read a paper start to finish the first time, and they're not trying to grab all like all the information in their head. They're just kind of getting a general feel for like what's going on, the the the, the vocabulary, the the main kind of theme of the paper, and, and stuff to sort of to to think about as they read the paper again the second time, right? So so most people just kind of shoot straight through it. Um, and, and just try to pick up as much as you can along the way, but don't worry about getting it too much. Second pass, um, I like to kind of jump straight to the, the models section. So it's kind of this middle section describing what they are doing that's new. Now, the, the reason we want to do this, especially for implementations, is this is where we're going to spend most of our time, right? So, so and in this case, um, I will read through the model section um, you know, a couple more times and, and focus just on what the major components are. So I'm not going to worry too much about the formulas um, on like the second and third passes, um, but but I am going to focus on like, okay, VTI, all right, so you know, what what is what does V sub TI do, right? In, in this case, that's actually the memory, right? So that's this, if, from our very simple stack, we had a list called self.contents that we put stuff into that list, right? That's, that's the, what, where it's holding all the information, right? This is, this is, that's what this is. And then ST is the strength with which it's holding each row in VT, right? And then RT represents um, when you read from the neural stack, um, kind of what you see when you're reading it, right? So, so I just want to know that these are the different components, right? So there's this big matrix that has all the information. There's this vector that, that has the strengths of that information. So, it, you know, it seems like some things are remembered more heavily or more pronounced than other things. That's another great takeaway. Um, and then, and then RT is just talking about how how much you know we can see uh, in the stack at any given time t. So, um, and there's also more explanation here, and and, all, and that's all well and good. Um, also, in this, you know, I'll definitely focus on on kind of the pictures. Um, they, you know, they're they're more intuitive. They're easier to see, and as you can see, you know, kind of see the same little variables here: v1, v2, v3. Um, Kind of tying back to you know uh, VT right here, so you kind of want to link the start to link the components together and, and get a, get a feel for them, uh, and then eventually when when I kind of feel like I know sort of the, the big parts, like if this if this paper was about building a car, right, then then I you know once I already know that okay there's a carburetor and there's an alternator and there's some wheels and there's a steering wheel somewhere and there's a tailpipe and 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 you know there's pistons like. I know kind of what the parts are and what their what their general purpose is. That's when you go through sentence by sentence, um, and just just understand each one in turn. Because you know the next sentence is generally going to be dependent on the last one. That's when you go when you dive deep into the formula. It's only after you already know that you know this is the memory. This is uh, what's being pushed into into the memory, and, and you know all these kind of little details of, about what each individual letter represents. Then you're sort of ready to go, um, and 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 look through the the, the formulas themselves, and so as I lay out kind of the blog post, like it's a good idea to sort of create this table, um, whether or not discreetly, at least in your mind, of okay, so here's the major variables, and here's kind of what they're called, what they are, and what they generally do, and maybe a little bit of how they relate to each other. Um, but that's kind of the way to approach the problem, right? So, so and in this case, um, if you kind of read this model section over and over again, you know the middle part, which is really describing what what they're building. Uh, what they're advocating uh, to, to be built and what they have built, um, 
we see that, okay, this is the memory, this is the strength, this is the, the reading. Um, um, the, there's also the notion of controller, which just seems to be a, a different kind of neural network. Um, UT and DT are, are really cool. So, so it seems like this, you know, and this is kind of like my head the first time I was reading it, you know, it seems like it's, it's continuous, right? So, so we don't just push something on wholeheartedly. We kind of push it on with a certain amount of weight. Um, oh, push it down here. So push it on with a certain amount of weight and pop it off with a certain amount of weight. So that, that's kind of interesting, right? And, and it's something to kind of muse on before, before really, really diving in. Um, and then ST and VT we, we already talked about. Also, there's this notion, everything seems to be underscore T. So, right, so we're modeling a sequence of data, and it seems like kind of this whole memory architecture changes over time. Um, so we just kind of want to be familiar with, with you know, that, that concept. And that's, that's the general theme to, to how the paper is modeling data. So, um, so yeah, highly recommend reading the paper as a part of getting to know this, this, this work on the blog post. Um, and I, I'd recommend first, you know, uh, just to recap, read through the whole paper, um, then read through the model section until you feel like you know what the general moving parts are, and then do a deep dive in, in through the model section um, to, to figure out how each component interacts with, with each other. Uh, and we'll actually work through that in, in the blog post here as well. So, um, um, all right, very cool. So now we'll kind of dive into uh, part three here and build a toy uh, little, little neural stack. It should be really exciting.